Have you ever handed back students' homework randomly only to wonder, hey, what's the expected number of students that get their own homework back? No? Just me, then? Still, it's an intriguing question, right? Before we go too far, make sure you're familiar with these well-trod topics. If not, be sure to learn these combinatorics basics before continuing. Okay, back to our randomly distributed homework question. We'll answer this question in two ways. First, the way that would make your probability teacher proud. And second, a more deranged way. Even though these two ways will necessarily give the same answer, be sure to stick around for both parts, because answering the question in that second way will set us up for future combinatorics. Let's begin by phrasing the problem more mathematically. For a given number of students n, we choose a random permutation of homeworks. In the language of permutations, when a student gets their own homework back, we call this a fixed point. If you're familiar with cycle notation for permutations, fixed points are the one cycles. The answer to our question, when phrased mathematically, is the expected number of fixed points of a random permutation of n objects. Let's let the random variable x be the number of students who get their own homework back, aka the number of fixed points of a random permutation. In fact, that's what capital X means for this entire video. Now we want to calculate the expected value of x for a given n. But rather than compute this using the formula you learned in class directly, we're going to approach it from the side. For each student, we can create a relevant random variable just for them. Rather than say x sub Alice, let's use x sub 1 up to x sub n for our n students' random variables. Let x1 be 1 if student 1, aka Alice, gets her own homework back, or 0 if she doesn't. That is, 1 or 0 if our random permutation has a fixed point or not for student 1. Similarly, we can let x sub 2 take the values 0 or 1 based on if student 2 gets their homework back, and so on for all of the students. Before moving on with finding e of x, let's keep our focus on e of x sub i alone. e of x sub i is 1 times the probability student i gets their homework back, plus 0 times the probability they don't. That simplifies nicely. Just looking at Alice, she gets someone's homework back. There's just as much chance of her getting her own as any other particular students. Since she's one of n students, there's a 1 in n chance she gets her own homework back. The same is true for every student. e of x sub 1 equals e of x sub 2, and so on. They all equal 1 over n. Now let's get back to e of x. Let's look at the situation where exactly k points are fixed. That's the event x equals k, where exactly k students got their own homework back. And as events, we can see why x equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2, and so on. For the k students who got their homework back, x sub that student is 1. But for the students who don't get their homework back, their random variables all contribute 0 to the sum. Writing e of x as e of the sum of the x sub i helps us because expectation is linear. Remember, events don't even have to be independent for e of x plus y to equal e of x plus e of y. So e of x being e of the sum of the student's x sub i's means that it's also the sum over the students of e of x sub i. That means our formula simplifies to e of x is n times e of x sub 1. And as we said before, e of x sub 1 is just the probability that student 1 gets her own homework back, 1 over n. Wait, what? That means no matter the number of students, the expected number to get their own homeworks back is exactly 1. Okay, admittedly I feigned surprise there, but this result is pretty wild. Now let's approach the question the way your combinatorics teacher wants you to, 
but we'll need to define something interesting first. After all, what math video is complete without a new definition? A derangement is a permutation with no fixed points. In our running example, that's a situation where no student gets their own homework back. If we use it as a verb and say derange n objects, we mean to permute them so none are back where they started. We'll write d sub k for the number of derangements of k objects. Perhaps in another video we'll talk about how to compute d sub k, but we've got plenty of content for this video already. Now, knowing we have n objects, how many ways are there to fix exactly k of them? Well, of the n, choose k to fix, then derange the rest. That's n choose k times d sub n minus k. Immediately we see that if we sum over all k, we're counting up permutations with any number of fixed points, that is, all permutations. So the sum of n choose k times d sub n minus k is n factorial. Nice. Let's finally return to the real problem at hand, the number of expected fixed points. Let's run headlong at it now that we know a little about derangements. e of x can be written as the sum over all values x can take of the value times the probability x takes that value. In our case for fixed points, we can substitute in the formula we just came up with. To get rid of that extra k in the sum, my first inclination is to appeal to what I call the team captain identity. I call it that because both sides count the following scenario. Imagine you have n kids from which to form a team of k, and from those k you must choose a team captain. Based on how I worded that, we've already seen how the left-hand side counts it. The right-hand side is counted by first choosing the captain from among all the kids, then choosing the remaining k-1 teammates from the n-1 non-captains. So if we apply the team captain identity to our calculation, and employ some methologer-style auto-algebra and re-indexing, we can appeal to work already done, breaking apart permutations of n-1 things into groups where j things are fixed at a time. And good! We get 1 from this expected value computation. It had better match the same answer as before. To recap, we showed that the expected number of fixed points for a randomly chosen permutation is exactly 1, no matter how many things are being permuted. That is, we expect on average one student to get their homework back when we hand them out randomly. And that concludes our curious question. Wait, sure we answered the average, but what about the variance? I guess you'll have to come back for the next video for that.